Welcome to this week's show, The Crazy Gentleman Podcast. I'm your host, The Crazy Gentleman, and this week's show is brought to you by Lexan Moto, da- no, Lexan Dash Moto.com uh, for all of the best audio devices inside your helmet. And if you're going to go there, punch in the code word crazy at checkout for 15% off. Also brought to you by Simbita underscore custom underscore knives on Instagram or SimbitaCustomKnives.com. Uh, hit him up and tell him I sent you home of the world's finest hunting and cutlery knives. Um, hit him up, man. Those. those are nice. Evan's the man. They're fucking badass, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he makes the cleanest, coolest knife, dude. Um, also bare knuckle performance, bare knuckle performance.com bare knuckle performance on Instagram for home of the highest quality American made parts for your Harley Davidson and Indian. He's got all your models, co- models covered, choppers, FXRs, Dinas, Sportsters, baggers, you name it, dude. Paul's got you covered all 100% made in America. And, uh, also the bump shop diaries hit up the bump shop backroom.com. That is the only place you could get my t-shirts and also go support Rodney and all of his vintage finds and his coffee company now. So uh, hit that up and uh, I don't generally throw this one in, but I'm going to start to. Please go to the Patreon if you want to support this page. Or no, this show, not this page. Uh, Or you can go to buy me a coffee. It's like Patreon, except there's no subscriptions. If you want to just throw me a dollar, five bucks here and there, you thought the episode was cool, go to buy me a coffee and throw a couple bucks at it, man. Help support this thing. Uh, Flying around the country and seeing all these wonderful people is not cheap. Um, So that's it, man. Speaking about flying around the country, I don't literally mean flying around the country all the time. You guys know I'm flying around on a motorcycle. Uh, And now I'm here in Phoenix with uh, the House of Horsepower, Kenny. What's up, dude? Glad you stopped by, man. Yeah, dude. I'm so glad to see you, man. It's been too long. And uh, we're, we're always chatting, like, almost on a daily basis. Uh, I'm always digging all this cool shit you're doing. Uh, I mean, you, you don't see engines anywhere else like this, man. It's uh, oddball stuff for sure. You know, even what you showed me before, your bikes, some of the cool little little collection engines, I'll call them, you know. You just don't see them. Literally, there's like two or three in the world of some of those. I like to collect like, odd, oddball or, engines, man. Right. Or even some of those engine parts. One in the world. You know, it's like, that's awesome, dude. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm in for it, dude. I'm glad you stopped by. It's <laughs> always good to see you. You guys stopped by last time. Yeah. And I had the Kenny Boy Spike. Yeah. And it had the 80-inch uh, Pro Mod in it. Yeah. Which was actually these cylinders and these heads in rocker boxes just a cone shovel it was a cone shovel bottom end yeah and uh we ran that we took it off the trailer we made what like four or five passes on it i ran 1277 right off the trailer without even like a really good tune not knowing what it's about uh listen to my neighbor out there yelling oh no i was looking oh. at the sound sound uh, <laughs> level on this thing <laughs> you know we pulled the thing right off the trailer ran 1277 did pretty good got a little faster as it went through the night and then i destroyed the transmission with it which was really weird because it had a 124 in that bike and it, hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of passes on it and that 124 never destroyed that transmission all of a sudden i put an 80 inch in it and it just shatters this thing what transmission it, was in there it was a jim's pro cut five speed okay but it wow. had a lot of passes on it through the years so you know it was it was pushing the limits mm-hmm. and it, funny story actually and this is not the first time i've heard this from professional drag racers who have been in this way longer than i've been i was in the pits and i had the bike on the kickstand and I revved it up and it slammed itself into gear. It's for whatever reason, it just launched itself into gear and it took off forward. I had my hand on the clutch and I was able to basically just get it to like, it's pretty scary. I was able to stop it, but it ran into my buddy David's bike Yeah. and Barbie's over there holding his bike up and I'm holding my bike up and I'm like, holy shit, this, uh, this is not a good situation. No. So we put it on the trailer afterwards. And of course I feel terrible, right? I'm telling David, I'm like, Hey man, anything you need just give me a holler we'll take care of it if you need you know whatever just let me know if i ruin anything on your bike i want to know right i'll pay for it or we'll fix it we'll make it whatever so it 
took it home, pulled it apart. That's probably the worst transmission disaster I've ever seen. Missing five teeth off the main drive gear, shattered the counter, fifth gear counter shaft gear. Wow. It was in bad shape. And this little this little 80 inch combination did that. Wow. So what we're gonna do is Oh no, oh don't don't worry. That oh. it's that that won't get picked up. Okay. That, yeah, cool. it'll be fine. It's all, all good. Right. Cool. Yeah. So what we're gonna do here is change it over to generator cases as you see it now, and so that way I can swap it into my black drag bike. Okay. And get a little bit better platform to run it in. Mm -hmm. And obviously we did the whole Kenny Boy Sim 8 swap. So I can't, you know, can't do anything with that at this, with this and that frame at this point. But I want to be able to put this combination in my black drag bike, pull out the stroker engine that's in it. And we're going to turbo this and put nitrous on it. And I'm going to try for a record of the most horsepower out of an 80 cubic inch combination. And I'm trying to push like... Just on a dyno, you mean? Like just... Yeah. He just the the, yeah. the largest horsepower so the most we've seen the most i've been told i've asked several engine builders my teacher russ uh rj naylor over at naylor performance uh roger lockwood at a at uh, a1 cycles uh is it a1 no number one cycles and machine sorry okay uh a1 mike that's a1 cycles there he's really good too both these guys are really really good okay and uh so we want to be able to to get this range up here into the 200 range the most i've heard so far is about 100 to 145 horsepower out of an 80 inch combination okay and it, that's just straight on 80 cubic inch four and a quarter stroke by three and a half inch bore whatever they've done to it to gain 140 horsepower that's really serious work on one of these things it's, it's, yeah that's crazy yeah oversized valves that's where we were talking earlier about the VGS 20 machine mm -hmm. where you could open up the valve seats and put, you know, double oversized. You could put like two inch intake valves in really start working these things pretty hard, making your own pistons. You could do a lot with these 80 inches, you know, and it, I want to beat that record. I want to be able to have at 200 horsepower plus record on an 80 inch combination. They say that there's no replacement for displacement. Yeah. It's very well true in, in some aspects. However, yeah. There is something that's comparable. It's called power adders, mm. and you turbo nitrous. You can right. gain that back. You you kind of run out if it's a small engine. You kind of run out of your top end. You know where right. your where your large bore engines would pick up more at the top like that. But just plan it right, gear it right. You could beat the shit out of some big bore engines with a small bore engine, man. Yeah, just take them down left and right, and that's what we're going to try to accomplish with this one. Uh, I'm going to step it back. The black bike that this is going to go in is our it's our lay down bike. It's an eight time national champion chassis, an AHDRA. This 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 bike's won some serious races. My teacher really messed with guys hardcore on this bike. He terrorized AHDRA pretty hardcore. Um, at first they laughed at him. He said, and he goes well, after a while they didn't laugh so much anymore. It was like oh shit he showed up. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he breaks in the first couple of rounds because he was taking them taking them down pretty hardcore with this bike uh i've taken that bike to truett and osborne multiple times it's something i do every single year right love right. it it's it's been going on that's where most motorcycle drag racing really started yes where the nitro came in people were taking shovel heads and iron heads and putting strokers wheels in them and and bonnie truett and and you know paul osborne <clears throat> amazing men extremely intelligent They've been doing this as long as as some of the other large companies out there that make you know make comparable stuff. These guys every single year, Arc City, uh, Mid America Dragway they call it, or Kansas International Dragway, they throw down some pretty good bashes, man. I've seen some good solid drag racing. It's outlaw style drag racing. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically sign the line. Your life is what it is. And if you wreck and die, that's on you. Right. You can't sue us. You know, that's typical at any track, but this yeah. is a little bit different. Um, these bikes are so old. They check them. They really don't give a shit. Right, right. It's, it's outlaw racing. It's pretty loose. <laughs> it's, it is pretty loose. <laughs> outlaw racing is what they call it. You, and uh, yeah. you kind of got involved, like, I mean, I know, like, whatever you're in business or whatever but didn't you grow up around there i isn't, did isn't that where you're from yep i'm from kansas originally uh -huh. and i actually started off my dad was taking me to truett and osborne races cool. and you know 
between Easy Rider, looking at Easy Riders, yeah, going to Truett. I always wanted to be this guy. You know, as a kid, I'd be like, man, look at how cool that is. Yeah, I want to do that. And oddly enough, I'm that man now. Yeah, and it's it's uh, to be said that you should never ever stop chasing dreams and it might have changed a little bit now that i've become that man now i'm chasing the most horsepower out of an 80 and different goals and dreams to come with it you know mm-hmm. and just keep pushing the shop getting a little bit bigger and you know you sit in my shop now and we were just talking about how it's it's small yeah but you know what i like it like this because i don't need a bunch i have all the tools i need access to tools when i need them yeah uh, in larger shops to be able to walk around Phoenix or to drive around Phoenix essentially and go to different shops and they allow me to come in their shop and do something or do work for them or help them or use their equipment. Yeah. Man, that's to be something to be said for. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like anything else, man. Um, to have like respect amongst your peers in the industry. It's like one of the biggest compliments, you know, it's pretty nice. And yeah. you know, out here, most shops are pretty supportive. Yeah, it's it's been a pretty cool game, man. Once people really started seeing what I was about, and, yep. and that I do have some talent here, yeah, it it's been pretty cool, man. They they start picking up on you and helping you out more and more. So, and we've grown, you know. Yeah, yeah, you definitely crank out your fair share of engines. Um, do you, I, I I usually ask this later in the show, but I just I don't know why I want to ask this now. What is uh like? A perfect street engine for you if you were just gonna build like no budget uh, just a badass street engine like what's your favorite platform to build with and to ride like pan shovel Evo twin cam m8 like what like now I mean I'm sure ch- that would change year to year but like right now what's what's your favorite like if you were gonna just build a badass street bike well did you see what Marcus did to my old FXR no. He destroyed that clutch <laughs> basket. Okay. The, the whole entire sprocket that was on that clutch basket, uh, part of the transmission, the belt, everything. My, my 96 that was in my FXR, it's a S&S 96 inch. Okay. V96, best engine. Which I'm sure you kind of like massaged. Yeah. I'd say. Pretty hardcore. If it's blowing shit up like that. Pretty hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we, I would run it off like all the old race gas. Okay. I would that we'd go out and race. Yeah. If it sat for a couple of months, we hadn't gone out. I just pour it in the bike okay. with the ninety one octane. So what are you about like one ten, one twelve in there? Because I'm yep. pouring one sixteen into it. In it. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like cups full. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, you could smell it at the stoplight. Um, that thing was pretty hardcore. Even just on regular pump gas, it put out ninety eight point six horsepower at one hundred and eight foot pounds of torque. Okay. And I rode that thing all over the state of Arizona. But just tough as nails. Yeah. Like you said, yeah, just ride it everywhere. Yeah. Yep. All through town, all through the state, to the prowl a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, California. It's, it's. plus I had that ex- same exact engine in my soft tail before that, and that thing went eight states and thousands of miles. Right. And I took it with me, and we traded it out for a 127, and, and yeah, and then somebody in California got that bike, and I don't know what they're doing with it now, but. You know, that that 96 is probably the best platform I could put my hands on. Right. It was durable. Just reliable. for a good street engine. Absolutely. Yeah. So it was 10 and a half to 1 compression, and I decked the heads mm-hmm. uh, about 40 thousandths, and that pumped it up. And I had a 576 redshift cam in it. Uh, just S&S heads, the uh, pop-up pistons for their 10 and a half to 1 compression stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty crisp. Mixed with the Trask pipe, The you know, that thing... Yeah, it, it flies. It sounds badass. Yeah, I had to, and like you said, it's proven too. It's just been bounced around the country and yep. You know, if um, I, do you do you think like uh, to a certain like when you get to a certain point of like giant cubic inches, um, or at least in evos, let's say, because you know that's still like your easiest bang for your buck for big inches, big horsepower, like bang for your buck. I think in, is an evo. Um, like a 124, 127 Evo, like it just kind of gets like the engine life starts falling off. It's not as reliable. It's blowing up drivetrain part. Do you think it gets to a certain point where it's just like not that practical on the street? I know guys are running them on the street, but like, let's face it, dude, it's going to eat up starters. It's going to eat up more clutches and ring gears. And it, it just is, it's hell on the drivetrain and it's hell. It's a fucking huge heat pump. 
it's hell on itself. Do you, wh- where do you think that line is? Like where it's just kind of, unless you're a rich guy and you're not really running state to state and shit like that, what do you think that line is? Like, the 124 is a pretty tough. It's like right they on that really line, chew right? It up. The that. problem with, with the bigger bore stuff is it costs more money, even internally. You know, things, you know, pistons aren't cheap. Right. You, it's not like an 80 inch where you could buy a set of pistons from Wiseco for like 225 Right. You're getting into the five and six hundred, seven hundred dollar range in pistons, depending on how you're doing this. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to build, you know, if it's a hot rod, you got to buy blanks and then cut your own. And that gets expensive too, plus the time you have into it. Um, Streetable wise, for like a regular working guy, let's call it. If you wanted to jump it up and get a good solid, the 80 inch is extremely reliable. Yeah. Extremely reliable. If I had to jump from an 80 to something bigger, yep. I'd go to a 111, a B111. Okay. They seem to be really solid. Yep. Uh, with every engine, there's an issue. Right, right. From every manufacturer, every engine builder. If there's not, then they haven't done enough of them. And that's something that another engine builder told me throughout the years. It, it, things happen. Yeah, yeah. And overall, out of 20 or 30 of those V111s, yeah. I see a lot of them still out on the street. Yeah, They're yeah. really proven. S&S is proven performance. Um, when you get up into like, there's another company that makes a 140. Evo. Yeah. Ultima. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of... <laughs> that's a lot of power. <laughs> that's a lot of piston movement. Yeah. You know, that thing's be- it's yeah. big. And you well, the other problem with around. that, too, is I had a, a 130 Ultima, and nothing is conventional, dude. None of the fucking flanges. Like, yep. it's not taking any fucking conventional Evo parts at that point. Proprietary to Ultima. Yeah, so it's like kind of getting into issues there, too. It was like the Reptech, you know? essentially, where it was proprietary to that. Right, it, right. You know, you get s and S. I I know I beat on s and S hard, but it's proven. Mm-hmm. All my stuff, my hot rod stuff, I mean, the yeah. made in there is full of S&S. Right, right. I can trust it. I can put my money into it yeah. and feel comfortable doing it and go, okay, well, this is like, geez, that was like an $11,000 engine. Yeah. That's really what it cost me to build that engine. Right. 11 I, grand. I mean, and I, I have, believe it. You look at it and you're like, whoa. Right. And you know. <laughs> you start to go, well, it's going to find its weak link, so I better make sure all of it's not weak. Right, right. So... I'd say the V111, okay. that's a really good streetable engine, gives yeah. you quite a bit of power, and or an 80 inch. Okay. I, I find those to be extremely reliable, yeah. easy money, on, you know, easy on your pocketbook, and you can get quite a bit of power out of them. Yeah. I mean, you could Those have always been basically my two favorite platforms, is like a hot rod 80 inch, um, and 111s and 113s, man. Like, you could just, I don't know, I feel like that is the sweet spot. Like, you could beat the piss out of them, and they're just reliable as hell, and they won't explode drivetrains like yep. like, the, like the really crazy shit will explode drivetrain shit. Yep. You know, just, it will. I don't give a fuck what kind. I don't care if you got Jim's, Baker, like, you got damn BDL clutch on there, Barnett. Like, it will eventually explode all that shit. It's like, pretty amazing. One way or another, you know, if you're hard enough on it. I sold the 124 that was in the Kenny Boyce bike. It mm-hmm. was 14 to 1 compression, yeah. compression releases. It was running on 116 octane with a giant Super D on it. And I think it was here when you were here last time, yeah. sitting on the stand. Yeah, 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 for sure. As I was going to say, it was definitely here. I sold it yeah. to a guy in the Netherlands. Oh, okay. And uh, he said, I want the fastest chopper in town. And I said, well, this one's going to do it for you. <laughs> 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 I, hope you got, I hope you got deep pockets for fuel, man, because that thing would drink a gallon a minute if you let it. Yeah. It was, it's a monster. Yeah. And it, at 116 <laughs> octane, it's like $25, $25 a, a gallon overseas, I'm sure. And mm. hell, who knows? Maybe it's cheaper there to buy than it is here because it's costing me about 19 bucks a gallon here to... to Damn. to do that yeah that is wild man. yeah oh we could have dumbed that thing down with a smaller cam and it would have still been rowdy yeah i yeah. don't i honestly don't know how he's gonna ride it down the street because it's like on or off it was running 980s so that bike was running 980s and it was like 715 lift on that thing well this one's 614 and wow. bigger cubic inch with fuel injection and it's all auto tune. Thank you, Nams. I really appreciate you. You saved my life. <laughs> I am no wiring expert. And uh, your plug and play kit was 
on point. I only had to ask for help twice. So, and that's because I'm no wiring expert. I think we, <laughs> think we, we figured that out. So thank you guys. I really appreciate that a lot. Jeff, you made it easy. Uh, I'm excited to see what this does. So yeah, I'm excited too, man. Yeah. Sorry to have Pretty to plug cool. that out there. No, it's cool, man. I, I so love NAMS. Na I have uh, NAMS wires on that bike, man. Nice. All the extension stuff. This shit's fucking great, man. On I love it. Yeah. American yeah. made. Yeah. It's awesome. Linked up um, with Thundermax. Yeah. This thing's going to be so awesome. You could talk to someone when you have questions. You call them. They're, they're great, man. I've, I've used them over the years. Yep. I'm, I'm all about them, you know? I'm yeah. I'm excited. Um, yeah, I'm excited too, man. Um, just, yeah, it's just such a cool bike, man. Um, when this thing comes out, I'll post a picture of it or whatever. You said that was one of the pictures I could post, so. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's sick, dude. That thing's going to blow people's minds. You know... This is this is a this is an M8 FXR, by the way. A Kenny Boyce, a Ke Pro Street FXR. Yeah. Only one in the world for sure. A Kenny Boyce FXR, and certainly the highest horsepower one, like no doubt, man. You know, there's another one. Crazy. There's another one out there. It's a Kenny Boyce. Uh, his name's Eschberg66 on Instagram, I think. And if I got that wrong, my apologies. He's a huge Kenny Boyce guy. Uh huh. I don't know if you know much about the Kenny Boyce bikes and frames, but. It's kind of an oddball following. Okay. I like different stuff. As you can see, I do different types of engines. You yeah. Know, you were talking about collecting, you know, odd engines. Yeah. Well, I like odd bikes too. Okay. And I like to have stuff that's not the same yeah. as everybody else. And this one is a Kenny Boyce Pro Street FXR. It's lived its life as a drag bike the entire time. Uh, fiberglass fenders, um, aluminum oil bag, gas tank. OG Arlen Ness fairing. That thing's amazing. Yeah. I don't know if you caught the front end or not, but it's... It looked like a, a, sk a pretty skinny drag front end kind of thing. It's I don't know what the deal was millimeter with it. PMFR okay. front end. Okay. The wheels are PMFR. It's his... That's his... Do you remember the crazy billet era? Like 2000? Yeah. Kind of yeah. Like they portrayed from, from like 95 to 05 was right. what I call the billet era. This bike is yeah. like textbook billet era. Yeah cool like something you don't see all the time um the real the frame itself is is extremely geometry correct for drag racing mm -hmm. also for riding down the road as well they're pretty comfortable bikes i've ridden a couple on the street it's pretty yep. amazing yeah uh, I, I built a one with a 127 in for a customer back in the day amazing it's probably my favorite fxr i've ever built like it was gangster dude yeah like, it's, they, it's hard to beat it, it is yeah you know? and you know You've got factory FXRs. They ride amazing. I'm going to say it. People might hate it. The Kenny Boyces. Yeah. Is on point. Yeah. I would totally... It, the next one I do, I'm totally going to make this thing like canyon carving. Another uh, Kenny Boyce. Yeah, I'm going to do another one. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love them. <laughs> yeah. oddball, oddball, man. And yeah. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do another M8 at some point. And I'm going to make this one where it's basically just a solid road bike. Okay. And... It, I can take it through the mountains, get my lean on, do something like that, or even make it just a good solid like circuit, like a, like a road course bike. Right. Something cool, you know? Yep. They, they seem to be pretty geometry correct. This one extremely, you know, with the wheelie bars and everything, power, power ratio to the, to the back. It's pretty on point for sticking a tire. Right. This bike was running nine eighties with a one twenty four in it. The way it's set up now, I'm really hoping it does nine twenties. Okay. Maybe even You think eights. you can even push it into the eights? Yeah, yeah. Well, CMP Turbo, <laughs> CMP over there. Yeah. I showed him the bike the other day, and when he realized I was in town, he's like, let's turbo that bitch. And I'm thinking, cool. Yeah. All the right players are coming to the table now. Yeah. They're really seeing this bike. They know that it's a serious contender. I mean, the engine that's in it, 131, 590 gear drive. Uh, SNS cam with the roller rockers, CP Carrillo pistons, it's 13 to 1 compression. The coolest cylinders in the world, the Motor Witch. Man. Danny Wilson cylinders. That guy. Dude, those are the coolest fucking things in the world, right? man. And I yeah. took them and I vapor yeah. honed them. Yeah. Which I thought so was So it great. looks like the blonde case. Yep. Yeah. It's, oh, it's sick, dude. Because they come in billet and all kinds of colors. And yep. I like the billet, but I didn't want the offset, you know? I wanted it to be all the way through. Right, right. And it, that's big to me. When yeah. you build an engine and a drivetrain, it's gonna look right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, all the, it's ninety percent of the bike. You know? Yeah. Well, let's stop that. Hold on. Seventy-five percent of the bike. Right. You know, it's it's the life of the bike, so it's gotta look good to make the rest of it look good. And 
I was pretty adamant about running those cylinders and you know he's been a friend of mine for a while and yeah very supportive of what we do and I he said here man yeah try him out I said all right cool and I'm excited to see what it does you know the pistons are nice CP Carrillo Forge pistons the overall the kit is extremely nice and yeah. You know, mixed with stage four heads, double oversized valves, S and S crank. Uh, I'm thinking. So, like what is the only Harley left on it? Like the head castings and the cylinder cases, or or the you know whatever transmission case, engine okay. cases, and the stage four heads and the rocker boxes, and that's about it. Oh, the stage four heads are Harley heads. They are. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Buddy Stubbs. I appreciate you. They hooked <laughs> it up. Uh, Jack Buddy over Stubbs there. is the one right there in. Uh, phoenix or yeah they're right, right here right Road. okay uh, yep with the big statue right the the big uh like racer statue of buddy stubbs right don't they have a statue in there or something um, i feel like i went there once and i remember a statue i don't remember the statue but i know they have the museum they got some pretty oh cool maybe stuff. that's what i'm thinking of that's the museum yeah. harley dealer yeah yep okay they got some pretty cool stuff in there and they've got that really early single cylinder sitting up in the window mm. man that thing's pretty cherry yeah, that's what I remember. There was a lot of stuff on display. Like, yeah, it was a unique dealer. I remember that. Yep, they race. Uh, Buddy's been into racing for years. Mm -hmm. And if you walk through and look, he did a lot of like circle track and flat track racing, which was pretty cool. So, and then Jack, his son, drag races or used to drag race. Okay. And, uh, you know, he seen what we were doing and wanted to get involved, which I thought was pretty cool. So cool. Yeah, I mean, they got the right players coming to the table. Yeah, it's man. amazing. And now that that thing's fuel injected too, man, it's like, what a candidate for a turbo, you know? Yeah. Like you know, turbo in a carb, it's cool, but it it's I don't know. To me, fuel injection is like made for turbos, dude. You know, like it's so perfect for a turbo. Yep, easy to know? control. Yeah, and especially these newer engines, they're so much tougher than, uh, like, I've seen guys turbo a lot of shovel heads and stuff, which is pretty cool, you know, but they're just not as tough as an M8 or, or a twin cam, you know, like, abuse-wise, you know, abuse-wise, they'll push gaskets, the turbos, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, but these newer engines, they're just, they're built better. They could definitely handle a turbo. Shovel heads, shovel heads are hard with turbos, because trying to get the intake in alignment, and then you got to connect uh. to the, you got to connect the, the tubing. To the intake, mm -hmm. keep all that in line, and you got what a ring or a band. I'm talking about burning you know? head gaskets on a shovel. Oh. The turbos will oh. burn head gaskets big time. Man. You know, yeah, it's yeah. the fastest way to ruin one of those heads too. Yeah, laser, laser a hole right through the return hole. <laughs> yeah, with a turbo, right? Yep, 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 yep. Uh, you know, this stuff's kind of meant like the cylinder. Yeah, that's are, a heavy flange, man. Like that's a heavy duty cylinder. Cylinders are uh, uh, what do they call that? Ductile iron. Oh, okay. There's no sleeves inside those cylinders. It's just one giant piece of iron that's been CNC really? milled and lathed. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Johnny Vickers at Hawaii Racing makes those for us. And you cannot purchase those from them. You have to purchase them from me. Um, one piece, just put the pistons and rings right in. Were I those developed for drag racing? They were. And I'm actually coming out with a set that have fins on them. And I'm going to try those on the street and see what happens. Cool. Yeah. And do a whole conversion kit and offer it. You know, you gotta buy some lifter blocks, lifters, and do the whole Evo shovelution conversion. Cool. So I want to see how it works out. You know, there's there's some differences, especially in the iron. So all I can really do is just make a set and put them on something and ride around and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. We're gonna figure it out pretty quick. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty fun, man. Where did motorcycles all start for you? Like uh, obviously, pretty young. Uh, with Truett and Osborne, like how how did it all start for you? But like, Dad got you into it. Like, who, yeah. who pushed you into it? My stepdad. Okay. He used to leave Easy Rider laying out on the coffee table. Yeah. And I'd look at it, and you know, taking me to Truett and my uncle Mike. They always had uh, little Yamaha bikes around for us, little fifties to ride. And then my uncle Kenny, he'd give us goat carts to ride and little three wheelers. And my grandma and grandpa had three wheelers and. It's been in my family a long time, man, and engine building as well. And cool. Uh, my uncle Kenny runs Ken's Engine Service, small engine service. Oh, really? And he does uh, lawnmower, and large size B twin lawnmower engines, and he's pretty good with that. And this is in Kansas. Yes. Cool. Yes, and then my uncle Mike, you know, he he, guy can repair anything. He's very good. 
you know, and, and my dad, he's always been into Harley. So those three guys, plus my grandpa. Was your dad like a typical old school biker guy? Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Just, oh yeah. yeah. You remember he's going to, he's going to be so pissed. <laughs> I love the hell out of him. He, he's, he's a good man. And he used to wear the, remember the old typical like soft hat, the Harley hat with the weird little bill in the front. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. 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 Almost like a welding cap, but yeah. not a welding cap. Yeah. He, and it had like the little pulse thing in the back. Yep. He loved those things, man. He was all about it with his chain wallet and his Harley shirt or his ACDC shirt. And like, he was definitely, he had a panhead when my mom and him met. And Cool. You know, I, I think he. It's I like think a he, typical 70s and 80s biker guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. from California and <laughs> yep. pretty cool dude. And he kept me into it through the years. And for his 50th birthday, I gave him a bike in a box. And I said, what's a bike in a box? Basically gave him a frame, some tins, a front end, some wheels, and basically, you know, some other small things and said, here, there's a starter bike project. Build. Yeah. Cool, man. And he actually finished it. That's an awesome fucking birthday gift. It, it took him a while and him and my mom worked on it for years Yeah, and he got it running and I'm going to go out and check on it here in a couple of months and, you know, kind of go through it with him and, but no, he completed it. It's a cool bike and. It, it meant a lot to him, I guess, you know, and, and I'm sure when he passes, I'll, I'll take the bike back and I'll go yeah. through it and take care of it. And that's kind of the plan, but he's always kept me into it, man. And my cousin, Chuck, man, we've, it's my it happens. It heats up when that thing's plugged in. It's going again. So, uh, yeah, that's your drag racing buddy. Um, your cousin. Yeah. Yeah. We've been riding our whole lives, man. Dirt bikes and little fifties and one twenty fives and. I've taken a pretty good beating on some dirt bikes. No, no Joe did. Yeah, we're good. Um, does he, what does he still drag race or, or is he just like your pit crew? So we just hooked him up with a bike. Thanks to vanilla cycles. Uh, Oh, cool. Our race team sponsors. Very they cool. They come up with a bike and they said, Hey man, check this out. You know, want to do a little swapping around? And I said, sure. Why not? So they delivered the bike over. It's a, it's a 98 or 99 or something. I can't remember exactly. Buell M2 Cyclone, and it's been it's been hot rodded. It's an actual drag bike, you know, slicks on it, and it's had some work done to it. And cool. So every year we'd go to Truett, he would say, "Man, I gotta get me one of these bikes. It looks so much fun." Well, when this bike came up available, I said, "Yeah, we'll take it." Yeah. I didn't really say anything to him. I just sent him a text, "Hey, man, need you to be around tomorrow. You got something coming." Oh, what? You know, he was totally shocked and surprised. He's like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like. There you go. That's fucking sick. Dude, you give the best gifts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, he's been good to me. We've yeah. gone a couple years together. The first year, we slept in the rain. Yeah. It was terrible the first year. True, <laughs> man. Uh, tornado season. It was tornado warnings. Like, I was in my tent mm -hmm. like this in my leather race suit in the cold, the cold wind and rain. And every side of my tent was collapsed in on me and just really? getting soaked. And he's in the truck. He had done give up, gone to the truck. Kelly Croner. I don't know if you know who that is. Another mm -hmm. dumbass with a Harley on Instagram. <laughs> I've heard of that guy. I don't know. I oh. might follow him, but I've heard of another dumbass with a Harley. He's a good dude. Yeah, yeah. He's, my, he's my true <laughs> chief, man. He he comes out and drag races with us all the time. He comes to true with us. And, okay. Uh, he's in his tent. He's so fucking drunk. He's he's flat faced out. He never even <laughs> knew any of this was going on. It was so... No. Dude, it was soaked. It, it, was, it was a good time. So the next year when we went back... We we all agreed we're taking the camper, so we did it. We did it right on the fiftieth, you know. Oh my god, it, dude! So he even said it again. He's like, "Man, I gotta get me one of these." So like I said, when it came up, I made sure that I'm hopping on it. Expand our team a little bit and get it in different places and get him out there making some passes. It's my way of giving back for being such a good friend and yeah. you know helping me complete my dream. I want him to do the same if that's what he wants to do. Right, and right. Yeah, I seen him out there ripping on the highway the other day on that video. That, Very cool. that little Buell's fast. I bet, man. They're fast even from the factory. You hot rod them up a little, and they're fucking rocket ships. Those are so cool, man. Buell's are actually what got me into Harleys. It's technically the first Harley engine I ever rode. Um, I helped uh, these two old friends of mine, their twin brothers, um, kind of do like a uh, Street Fighter chopper-ish kind of Buell out of the old X1 Lightnings with the steel frames. Oh, yeah. And... Um, Dude, after I rode those bikes, like, a week later, I was already ordering parts to build my first chopper. 
I was like, yeah, I got to start getting into Harleys, man. These things are badass, you know? Yep, those little engines are yeah. fast. Those Buells got me hooked, man. You can, you can really um, turn those Buells into some serious drag bikes. Yeah. Uh, John Coburn out here, that guy runs like 940s with his Buell. It's yep. amazing. So That's wild, man. I'd like to see my cousin get to that point where we can actually really battle it out because I did tell him this. Yeah. <laughs> and this, I'm dead serious on this. I, I don't care who you are. We can be friends all day long. Yep. We can sit here, we can smoke, we can drink, we can hang out, we can hang out at the track, we can barbecue. Yeah. But I rest assure you that when I hit that water box, that shit's over with. Yeah. When that light turns green, it's a battle. Right. And I'm going to beat you. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. I take that competition very serious to that point. Other than that, I'm just having fun. Right. And seeing where this takes us. But I told him straight up, the light turns green, it's over with. And hope you know that. We're going to battle it out and we're going to go back. And we're gonna barbecue in the pits. That's awesome. And that's a good that's a good push and challenge to get. Just almost like a dude. It's like a, I mean, healthy competition. You know? Yeah. You know, unhealthy competition would be like we're not friends at the end of the day. You know what right. I mean? But right. yeah, no, dude, I love competition. That's cool. Should um, be pretty interesting. Hell yeah! I hope we get to line up. Yeah. I'm gonna beat his ass with this boo, with this Kenny voice. It's where did we stop? Technical failures. <sighs> yeah, technical difficulties. That's the um, that's the fucking theme of this show because I don't like uh, electronics. I'm not a gadgets guy. Um, oh, also, uh, I forgot to uh, shout out to my producer Whiskey Eye. Uh, I couldn't do any of this website stuff, this podcast. None of this shit would have ever taken off without her. Um, so uh, yeah. I'm just littered with technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. It seems like my life. You know? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd rather just keep it simple, you know? Manual machines and stuff like that. But uh, it is what it is, man. We're living in the modern world. I bought a new camera. Can't figure it out. Oh, yeah, man. But I can run a mill. Yeah. Away. <laughs> I can build an engine. Yeah, yeah I saw uh, that camera in there. What, what's... um. What'd you buy the camera for? Just to fuck around with photography? Or is it like uh, you want to get better pictures on the internet of the engines? Like what? Did you just do it as a hobby? Um, I do like, I do like to do, take photos. Uh-huh. Um, business. I'm also kind of I'm corresponding for Outlaw Biker Magazine. Okay. I think we talked about this earlier a little bit. Very briefly. Um, but uh, yeah, what, what do you got? Are you going to be writing articles for them or? gonna try and okay. take some photos cover some events cool coming up in texas in two weeks i'll be covering that event doing the drag bikes okay uh they didn't have anybody going and you know so i figured why not give it a shot kind of start helping promote some of this again uh, drag racing never gets enough promotion yeah. especially with vintage motorcycles you know mm -hmm. it seems to be huge in texas so i want to go cover that scene a little bit and check it out and and give this stuff to the to Outlaw Biker magazine and see where you know see where it goes. They have interest in it, and it all kind of started dying on us again. No, no, I'm just I'm just looking, to make sure it's recording and all. I'm just uh, I'm just keeping an eye on things. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that'd be our luck. Um, <laughs> you know, kind of start covering that. It all kind of took off on Bike Week over here. Some things happened, and I had already been talking with this magazine and. Mm -hmm. I just kind of relayed some information that went down and next thing you know, I'm filling that position. So cool, which I thought was pretty cool. And I like to go after talent. There's a lot of guys that have been promoted over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good builders right now. Seems like a really good time for people building stuff out of their garage. Yes. And I want to yes. see some of these motorcycles because... I see, I see these guys for the, the born free build off bikes. They're doing it with like the bare minimal. Yeah. Building some killer bikes, man. Yep. Arizona's pretty huge for that. A lot yep. of guys build bikes out here and I want to get some of the talent that hasn't been seen, start pushing that out a little bit. I feel their pain. I've been doing yep. this for a while, what, eight, nine years. Yeah. And <clears throat> nobody's picked my stuff up. Yeah. But you know, I guess it, it's getting some traction though, for sure, man. Yeah. Um, takes hard work for sure you're you're definitely getting some traction and um dude honestly that's one of these that's one of the things that i like this show to be about uh as many big names as i do cover in the industry i like to cover the guys that no one's heard of that should be getting their due 
Um, and nowadays, like the talent that's coming out of garages and fucking homes, guys that are not even doing this for a living, the fucking level, the game has been upped so high. But but some of these guys are not getting credit, man. Like, it's wild what's out there. I feel their pain. You know? I've yeah, me too. Me too, and, man. And it's it's so I'm gonna try to look out for that guy. That's huge awesome. to me. And I think this magazine is on board. I've I've looked through it several articles. I gave you know kind of spread it out for some people to look at, and they thought the same thing. Is like, you should definitely start looking for some guys that new talent. Very cool. No disrespect to the old old guys that have been doing this for a while. <clears throat> you know, I always say this. You were a small guy at one point. Mm -hmm. So make sure to treat those small guys with the same respect you looked for because that's how this community continues on. Yeah. And I was blessed enough to meet Russ, my teacher, his teacher, Big Tim. Yep. You know, those guys turned me into the monster I am now. (laughs) I think I do like 30 to 40 engines a year, somewhere in that range. Wow. And we ship them all over the country, all over the world. I've got stuff in Siberia, Israel. Germany, uh, Australia, a couple in Australia, uh, Mexico, Hawaii, here, Canada. Pretty lucky, man. All through the East Coast. You know, it's awesome. I like it. Yeah, let me ask you this. Um, Easy Rider has kind of like, I'll say like softened it up a little. It's not like the uh, chicks with their tits out and stuff like it used to be uh is outlaw biker still as wild as it used to be too um, i know that was like a that was a pretty wild dirty magazine is it still like that or have they cleaned their act up a little or like and i don't say that in a bad way i do like the old dirty biker magazines i just for a lack of a better term is why i'm saying it you know not in a negative way i, do I love it so. per, i love it personally i do believe so okay a lot of the stuff i've seen Times have changed. Yeah. Everybody's offended. Yeah. It's stupid stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's stuff that's pointless. Yeah. And they're going to be offended by it. So then you start seeing, oh, you you totally demoralized this chick for sitting on this chopper. I, I'm into it. That's what I grew up to. Right. Like, right. I, I was just telling Barbie in the house the other day, I was like, we should get that chick, Hora the Explorer. Have you seen her on TikTok? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to look her up later. And she does this whole mannequin pose, man. She looks like a total mannequin. Okay. She's cool as shit. I think she's funny. Okay. And she, she's, she goes by the professional dumb bitch. Okay. It's, uh, it's pretty funny. I, she, I think she's from around here, and I thought, I should get her to come over. I think she's... Sure. Her. I don't know if she is 100% or not. Okay. Get her, to, get her to pose with my bike. Yeah. That's, that's stuff I grew Dude, up with, Dude, if it's man. two consenting adults, what's the issue? Right. You know, it's like, what are you going to do, man? Right. You know, like, I, I don't know. I grew up on that. I, th- I personally think this world should be ver- fairly lawless. Uh, yeah. I personally am not for any big government. I think the government should basically take care of our infrastructures and leave us the hell alone with all their other laws and taxes and every damn thing else. That's just my opinion. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, if you want some uh, risque chick posing on a bike and it's uh, and she's down for it, uh, whether it's a favor or that's her, what she's getting paid to do that day, it is what it is, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, you know, whatever, you know. I'm sure she's got an OnlyFans page. People pay her there to do whatever she does there. I don't. I'm not saying this girl. I'm just saying. Right. Generally, a lot of girls yeah. do now, and it is what it is, man. If if it's okay on OnlyFans, and what the hell's wrong with it? If it's an adult buying an adult magazine, you I know, think a lot of it's how been, I feel been restricted from the store shelves. Because, oh, for sure. Because corporates had to go. For sure. With the, with but the with the new. internet now, you could still drive your sales with the internet. Yeah. You don't need stores and big corporations like you used to. Digital Which is copies. another cool part of the world, man. Like, um, like me and Truth uh, at Chopperhead talk a lot about this. Like, even with podcasting and all this stuff going on, man. It's like it's the new, um, it's a new frontier for another outlaw form of media. You know, um, you know, years ago we couldn't go on a, a program television show, like let's say the Discovery Channel shows or whatever, and talk about this shit. You know, or even some of these media. Uh, forms getting you know taken off of shelves and stuff and you know you want to introduce yourself too do you want to be in here for a minute no okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know it's like this is this is a lawless you know there's no rules here you know um, which I'm all about it you know yeah absolutely um, 
yeah but uh, yeah that's cool if you know i don't know if they're cleaning up or continuing the outlaw tradition or whatever but i always liked outlaw magazine pretty cool i still have a lot of their old stuff you know i'm kind of a hoarder i kind of collect a lot of stuff so uh i have some cool magazine collections i definitely I probably have a good dozen, maybe maybe twenty outlaw biker magazines still. Nice. Yeah, like outlaw biker. You know, um, I've got all different other ones, but I'll forward you some of these that I have. <laughs> cool. And uh, you can kind of look through and see see where you're at with it. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of both. Okay. Now that we've been talking about it. Yeah. You see where it goes. Yeah, mix it in there, man. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with corporate corporate structure. Yeah. And, and what you can sell and what you can't sell, and I think a lot of the the cover is usually like the cover of the magazine is kind of covered up somewhat right right and then you get into it in detail right it, you know start reading through some pages it becomes a little more risque you know which is <laughs> yeah cool, yeah you know but. which i think at that point you can still you know if they're cool with it you could still keep it on a public shelf it'll just be in that plastic bag you know as long as the cover presents okay for the public and it's in that plastic cover so that you can't flip through it on the shelf i think it's like Still, anything goes in a lot of stores, you know. Cause yeah. They'll sell some of those silly magazines, you know. Like Walmart, you know, or like any grocery store that you go into, it's pretty pretty hard to find a biker magazine anymore. Yeah. I've looked. Yeah. I, I walked through the sections. I'm like, well, the other problem too is, man, print media is on a downslide. So yeah. like, big time. You know, I don't think it'll ever, let's say, go away. But um, a lot of those magazines have gone out of business over the years, you know. Um, but the guys that stuck around that are still in it, I think are just going to kind of be here from now on, you know, it's, it's trimmed down to, I think as small as it's going to be, you know, choppers magazine. Yeah. Nick, uh, Carrie at choppers, they do the quarterly thing, which I like, yep. it gives you something to look forward to. So, you know, each month it kind of like, it gets costly, I would assume to print. Oh, of course. And yeah. Now they brought hot bike back to print. Yeah. Super cool. I made sure to jump on that right away. Yeah. Because I, I firmly, firmly support print magazine. Yeah. Uh, Cycle Source is still doing a monthly. Yeah. Um, Those guys are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cycle Source is cool. Um, I still get that one. It's not really my subscription, but it comes to my house still, which is cool. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. There's still some cool magazines left. Um, Top end. Yeah, oh, dude, I had him on, Nick, man. Um, I was drawing a blank for a minute. I was going to call it its original name, but, uh, yeah, that kid's doing some cool shit, man. I love Nick. Um, yeah, so there's still some cool ones around. Yeah, for sure, man. Pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah. You've taken to the internet pretty good. You know? I love it. I love following you. I started with nothing. Yeah. I, I don't know if mo many people know about how I've gotten here just a few and the stuff I've gone through to do this it it uh, started with basically nothing we moved into this place I was telling you about over there shitty little trailer house we lived there for what eight years and it worked hard oddly enough it took us to a place where we were struggling and then I met my you know my teacher Russ he mm -hmm. lived behind us so all I had to do was walk out the back gate and walk over and start helping him build engines. Yep. And then it progressed into, oh, wait, we've got a shop now. And he's been doing this for a long time, years and years, and drag racing and all this stuff. And we'd always hear him rev up the, the Kenny Boyce bike. The thing was nasty, huh? He'd shake <laughs> our walls over there, too. And uh, I, I've been in a lot of trouble with the other house for shaking shit off the walls. It never <laughs> lasted long up there, especially with the black drag bike. But I, I met Russ and... and I just started helping him and then he started to, you know oh i got a mentor and all the all the chicks he'd bring around oh you're you're russ's apprentice yeah and it just over the years we started doing more and more i did a 1915 or a 1930 dl with him did you and plan on being an engine builder when you started uh with no. russ no but you know what's funny yeah remember that sign we seen over by your mom's place that said uh freedom starts this many Five miles, yeah. It's up on Beardsley and Cave Creek Road. It says Freedom Starts Five Miles This Way. Okay. And I went, okay. Never really thought about it. I took a picture of it, too, just because I liked the sign. Well, it's Buddy Stubbs. And then we got our house, and it was one mile from Buddy Stubbs. Oh. And then I met Russ, and Freedom began. Freedom started. Five miles away. That's so crazy. Weird, huh? Yeah, and man. And I still to this day, that picture pops up in my Facebook feed, and I'm like, yeah, it did.
yep, that's cool with me. I like it. And I started helping him and he introduced me to his teacher and then he introduced me to Mark Dunn, who's taught me a bunch. He, he taught me how to build a clean motorcycle, nice, tucked, brake lines a certain way. Uh, he's notorious for that type of brake line. It looks super clean. Okay. It's, it's, Does he produce his own brake line? I never heard of him. No. Okay. It's actually the black, the little thin black line. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the, 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 the like just fittings. the vinyl. Yeah, and yep. you're making your own with the ferrules. That's yep. the best way to do it, man. Okay. That's the cleanest. Super clean. Yep. It takes. You can run it right through the bars. You can hide it on the swing arm. There's a lot of ways to hide that stuff. If you're building a soft tail, you can drill a hole through the front of the frame by your forward controls, make it at the right angle, and then run it through the bottom of the frame out the back to the rear brake. Wow. Yeah, that's cool, man. Super, super yeah, I never cool heard ways. of anyone running internal brake lines like that. That's rad. And it protects it from getting beaten up on the road. Right, right. And I like that. Yeah, so that I've always cool. stuck with it. And you can actually force that through easier through a set of handlebars like t-bars mm -hmm. or uh like apes you know or even drag bars you can force that through easier and if you're smart you'll attach your wires to it with a piece of tape and force your wires through with it too cool man so it's kind of like a you know a stiff little piece to go with it to go through right so now your wires aren't even jiggling around in the frame like that you know chafing on anything pretty smart stuff man i watch mark a lot he builds some of the finest fxrs very nice stuff i the man's a craftsman, a true craftsman of the trade. Yeah. And if you ever get a chance to meet him and learn from him, soak it all up, man. Okay. I told him, I told him yesterday, wouldn't be here without you. He just kind of shrugs it off like it's nothing because that's what he likes to do is help people. Yeah. And. Hey, is he an older guy now? He's, he is. He's older than you? He is. Yeah. And I met him through Russ and those two men have taken me on a journey that's amazing. Yeah. And then Big Tim, Russ's teacher. Before he passed away, I kind of think he knew it was coming. Uh-huh. Super nice guy. He really loved the hell out of us, huh? He sold me all this equipment that I have. Every, oh, I had more stuff. Some of it went away because it was, you know, a little rough. I walked away with the honing machine, all the equipment with it, all the flywheel working stuff, all the, all the, everything you needed to basically start a shop. Yeah. For like four grand. Wow. Mm -hmm. So is that when you kind of branched off on your own once you got all yep. his equipment? You're like, all right, dude, it's time to yep. time to spread my wings here. They both turned me loose and said, you're on your own and I'm done. <laughs> and uh, Tim passed shortly after. And uh, Russ is still around. He doesn't really want to work on anything. He just refers it all over to me. Okay. He'll analyze it and go, well, take it to Kenny. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with it. So it's cool, man. They really support what I do. And, and I dig it. I started with nothing. And we just built up over time and I've been collecting tools when you're not spoon fed man and you don't have a silver spoon and you're not from a rich family yeah and you've been a fuck up early in your life <laughs> <laughs> and you've been through the ringer you got to start somewhere man and it's not it's not easy and and I think a lot of that has to come with like this is business but you have to have some integrity with that business mm -hmm. and take care of your people you want to be in it for the long haul I've seen a lot of come and go shops man yeah fly by night shit this is Phoenix. Well, you you also were around uh, during the chopper boom. Yeah. And like Phoenix is the pinnacle of the chopper boom too. Yep. Like All the there was probably like stuff. there was probably like 300 shops in Phoenix. I mean, what what's like left now? 50? And 50 might be 50 is a lot of fucking shops, but Yeah. But a lot of shops left. Cape Creek Road? Yep. When you go home tonight yep. or, or when you go to Brad's place? Yep. To go up and crash out? Yep. If you take you probably just take the highway. It's the fastest. But if you were to start at Dunlap Road okay. on Cave Creek Road and you were to go all the way to Brad's place, there's got to be 35 bike shops on Cave Creek Road. Jesus Christ. Damn. And and I'm assuming during the chopper boom, there was like a gazillion. They come and go, man. Yeah. RJ Naylor from Naylor Performance tells me, I've seen him come and go in the 25 years I've been here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. still here. And that says a lot. And that's where I'm looking to be. Yeah. And and he's really good at what he does. So I've learned from him as well. And, and you know, it, especially that. You want you want to be in it for the long haul. That's it, why I try to produce the best engine I possibly can for customers. We run them before they leave 60 minutes. Yep. Uh, I analyze Oh, the yeah. Oil. That's the other cool part about your Instagram, man. The fucking engine startup and the engine running videos. That's another thing no one else is doing. 
I love want, that. You want to know I like why? that and the flywheel, uh, the dial indicator on the flywheels. I love seeing that. Like the engine is perfect. I like the. I, I love like the analog. That. And yeah. I like the digital, yeah. so you know that I'm not lying. Yeah. Oh, it, I've seen the comments. Guys are like, oh, that's wh whatever the hell they say. Whatever, Haters dude. out there. Yeah, I love whatever. seeing that. Someone put, a, someone put some stupid comment up, uh, I don't know, it was probably like six months ago. Whatever the hell they said, I remember just thinking in my head, I said, there's no way that guy's ever even set up a dial indicator if he's saying that. Like, he was saying something about, like, the video skipping or something. I'm like, get the fuck out of here with that, dude. I'm like, that's a, that's a real video. That's, I write so much of yeah. that stuff off. Yeah, yeah. It's hard because I want to say something. Yeah. yeah I want to be like, I'm like, I'm you got to like a, kind of be like professional, but yeah, yes. whatever. I get I have to I bite my it. tongue. I have to keep the fingers under control. <laughs> yeah. I'll be, hey, asshole. You <laughs> yeah. know, like, but I, I keep it under control. It, it's pick and choose your battles. Yeah. She's taught me a lot of that. <laughs> and, you know, if I was to turn her loose on customers, we probably wouldn't have any business. <laughs> so I try, I try to be pretty tolerant for a lot of stuff that happens. I'm not allowed to talk to customers. <laughs> yeah, we stopped that long ago. That, that went south a couple of times. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not much for being threatened. And as nice as we are, I, I like to honor my stuff. If there's a yeah. problem, it's as simple as, hey, man, I have a problem. Right. And I'll talk to you. But you yell at me? Yeah. We're going to have problems. I'll right. just hang up the phone on you. And right. then you're going to be pissed and call me back and yell at me again. I'll hang up again. All right. If you come over and you yell at me, I'm going to ask you when you're done, are you finished? Now let's find a plan of attack to figure this out. Right. I don't want you yelling at me. I did I did repos for like 10 years. I spent 10 years getting yelled at. What what, what do you mean repost? Like uh, auto repossessions. Oh, repost. repost. I thought you said yeah. repost, like on no, Instagram, no, no. repost. Well, I did that oh. too at the Southwest <laughs> Chop Swap. Remember, I don't know if you remember that page or not. Yeah, yeah. But I even caught a lot of shit there too. But no, repossessions. I did those for you, 10 You're not years. doing the Chop Swap no. thing anymore? Okay. I stopped that like okay. five or six years ago. I did that for like 10 years, man, the repossessions. I got yelled at every day. Think I want to be yelled at now? All I'm right. trying to provide you freedom. All at right. that job, I made your life miserable. Right. I took your vehicle. I, you probably lost your job. You lost your home. Now you're on your feet, like walking to the bus stop in the heat. Right. You're building dreams here. Right. And people are still mad. Right. Like, you know, right. it's like, like it's how crazy, could you be mad dude. at the dispensary when you're buying weed either? Like, <laughs> right. you're buying pot. You're going right. to be happy in a few minutes unless right. you absolutely need it. Like, I get it. But yeah. Yeah. We're, we're building dreams here. And like, I want you to be happy. And I know you spend, you know, you worked hard for your money. Right. I work hard for my money that you pay me. So I want to make sure it's right before it leaves. Nobody's perfect. Again. I always I always say though, like some people, uh, they wouldn't even be happy with a winning fucking lottery ticket. Yep. You know, it's like I'd probably just, be that guy a little bit because just, then I'm like, now we got more fucking problems. Don't worry about. <laughs> Wonder what asshole's gonna call the woodworks and be like, hey, bro, pal. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh, you get friend. that. You would get that. Oh my yeah. god. You'd get family members you never even fucking heard of. Fucking a man. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, but, yeah. Then you got me. Yeah, <laughs> we, we evaluate. Yeah, refer to my winning lotteries uh, for customer sales associate here. Oh yeah, that's perfect right there. No perfect. time for the bullshit. Yep. We, yep. you know, we're on a mission, and we, in to to round it all back, we started with nothing, and we're just building it up. Yeah. And eventually, we'll be up there. We'll have a, a decent spot. You know, I really don't want to leave being a home based engine shop. Yep. But I have a feeling it's going to keep going and going, and I'm not going to have a choice either. I'm going to have to build a good size shop, and or move this program somewhere else. Right. And I like Arizona. It's hot. Terrible for my Lyme disease. It's really taken a toll on me the last couple of years. I've been doing all this through dealing with like post Lyme symptoms. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know what it is. You can get it, you know, from tick. You can get it from mosquitoes. You can get it sexually transmitted. It's it's if it sticks with you like you yeah. it's, it's fucking living especially hell especially if you're not treated for it right away yeah but the problem is sometimes you just don't know you have it and right. I went eight nine years of not knowing and it oh. really took a toll on me like my kidneys you know my heart it, constant widespread pain it's pretty tough man and I battle through all that they say that's the, the biggest I've had Lyme disease before too I went um, I'm trying to think June it was probably eight or ten months before I got diagnosed and I was like pushing people it's a fucked up disease man because like 
it's so unknown. I remember just like pushing so many doctors. I got, yep. I must have got six tests before yep. they actually wanted to start treating me. And like for me personally, it took uh, about three or four months to start clearing things up. And I've been healthy since. But I've got a handful of friends that are like permanently, they're going to be dealing with it forever. You know, yeah, it's, it's me. It's one of those diseases that's it's in you forever. Even me, it's, you. it's in me forever. But I mean, I guess my body just dealt with it differently. But God damn, that's a fucking hell, hell of a thing to have. Man. And it'll kill you eventually. Like, yeah, it'll that's what I think kidneys. too. Like, did it shorten my life? Is yep. it shortening your life? Absolutely. Like, I think it is, man. You Absolutely know? tearing me apart. Uh, the kidneys. So I do experimental treatments. Yep. Uh, I've kind of given my blood and and to try and further science kind yeah, of deal. Basically. Yep. And help other people with it as it goes. Yep. We've tried ketamine, uh, doxycycline, that shit didn't work. But mm-hmm. that's probably what they gave that's you. That's the generic yeah, they give right. you that for IV. thirty days. Yep. Yeah. Yep. IV stuff. Yep. And and yeah, it works for some, doesn't work for others. I've got the Bergdorfy strain is what it comes down to, and it's it's a co infection. It's pretty hard to get rid of. It's like uh like little pigtails. It almost looks like a like a Almost along the lines of a syphilis type, like uh, spirococcus, what they call it, okay. bacteria. It just drills at your muscles and your bones. Okay. It looks like a little pigtail or a corkscrew for pulling out, wine, you know. And corks. that's actually what drives the pain? Yes. Okay. And it gets me some days, it'll get me in my shoulder. Some days, mm-hmm. it'll get me in my chest. Mm-hmm. Some days, it'll be in my leg. It just touching me sometimes causes like, like burning sensation. It's kind of weird, man. But, you know... With some of the treatments, that stuff's gotten better. Mm-hmm. The doxycycline didn't do anything. Uh, the ketamine actually helps. Most people hear it and they're like, "Oh, special K." Right, right. No, they no, they such do, they do a dose. lot of um, mental illness curing with that too. Yep. There's so much there, dude. All these all these drugs now that were like criminalized and and uh, I don't know, like like basically propagandized. You know, uh, what do you, what do you call it? Um, like yeah, pro- whatever, man. They, like like the, the they were prohibition type, prohibition type drugs. Like uh, the whole reefer madness thing. Oh, yeah. They were they were like ostracized by society. But you know, mushrooms being another one. Like all this shit is coming out now that there are medical uses for these things. Yep. You know. Yep. Um, is would stem cells uh, be any help to that, or are they like playing with like stem cell? research for Lyme's disease or anything or no well we found out in mexico Mm -hmm. because i've actually been going to the mayo clinic Uh uh-huh and doing some of these treatments okay and i I did a couple for the moderma vaccine okay really yeah okay it was terrible it screwed one of them screwed me up pretty good made me like you were um a tester for it yeah like a like a clinical trials and stuff yep okay yep so i i basically signed up for it there's no payment no nothing it's oh really well if that's if, what i was thinking they pay it, you for no, it no no oh, okay. if it helps then i win right right so right. i'm willing to do it and okay. they take my blood they check me you know over oh so periods. this was when you say went to moderna this was not covid related this was no. to, for a lyme disease vaccine of some sort they make multiple different types of medication for moderma over there okay they make make multiple types of vaccines so they came up with this one for Lyme okay and then a secondary one and I tried it it helped for a little bit Mm -hmm. but it came right back so it's not like a long-term thing I think it's a vaccine to prevent it not to actually help cure or get rid of symptoms right and once you really get stuck with the symptoms you're kind of done like it's permanent uh the post-stage ones especially uh the stem cell stuff pretty interesting that you bring that up because we were just in Mexico mm-hmm. at, in uh, Los Algodones in Mexicali essentially Baja area it's a big medical town and they have stem cell reach for research facilities there mm-hmm. so I stopped in Barbie seen it and she's like hey check that out and I'm like it couldn't hurt to try it right so I walked in they actually have treatments it takes a certain amount of stem cells for Lyme and then also my chronic fatigue stuff. Uh huh. And it, it's not bad. It's like twelve hundred bucks a treatment. So I've been wanting to treat it and try it and, and right. see how they work. But you know, you gotta, but none of that's permanent either. You're shelling out twelve hundred every so often or whatever. Right. Yep. That's the problem with the stem cells. It's not like some permanent cure all. Yep. But it is an awesome cure for a lot of things. You just have to keep going back. Yep. Eventually, yeah. it might take it away. I really don't know. It's not been proven, and 
you know, it's pretty tough. I asked, I, a lot of people think when you go to Mexico, you get this subpar medical treatment. That is like the total opposite. Mm -hmm. When I went for dental down there, uh -huh. man, it, it just lets you know that there's so many greedy American doctors here. Oh yeah. Oh dude. yeah. 110 the, bucks for an MRI. And the insurance like, companies are driving a lot of that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's like even the medication. I don't know if you buy medication down there, but you get it for like fucking pennies on the dollar. It's yeah. the same shit. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. It's amazing. That's why That's why I've been, you know, I put that engine up for sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, over. Every, oh, yeah. every 30 minutes it, it does a thing. Nice. That, yeah. th that camera's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, We're good. I put it up for sale so I could get some treatments going on because the summer's going to be pretty tough for me. Plus, uh -huh. I have a lot of traveling to do. And, you know, I really don't give up. Uh, in two weeks, I'm riding a nitro bike for Russell. Hell yeah. And that's in Texas. That's in Texas. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to go do that. And then probably sometime shortly after that, I'll jam down and get one of those stem cell treatments, see where I'm at. And then Born Free comes up. And then, you know, in August, I've got Sturgis. So have you got, ever gone to Born Free? I have a couple of times. Cool. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, I've I got to get there, man. I've never been. No? Nah. Oh, man. Yeah. Texas, I, I heard Texas was pretty pretty on it this year and yeah. i think i'm gonna do that one after because uh, california's coming up in june are you closer to the texas one or california california okay california for sure and it's okay. always a good time yeah it's just riding back from cal from cali through the desert oh yeah the first year i went and i rode my soft tail back yeah dude it was 121 in palm springs Jeez. oh my fucking oh, engine dude. my engine did not like that at all that fucker had no pressure and it, dude it, it must have felt like just I stopped at big five oh. and I got a long sleeve because I knew I left with no long sleeves. So I'm in it's June. Yeah. In yeah. the middle of the desert. I'm gonna get sunburned pretty hardcore and I had no, you know, no sun no sunblock or anything. And so I stopped and got a shirt, a long sleeve. I soaked that, the outside shirt, my riding jacket, all of it was soaked. Within twenty miles it was all dry again. Damn. He was like, man, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> I should have known better. And uh, I rode to court site, so I stopped in court site, got some fuel. I always get beef jerky in court site. My road trips. Is there a place there or like? Oh, really good fresh jerky is the name of it. Okay. It's oh, like, that makes sense. It's nine bucks a pack. Okay. But so when you buy it, you'll understand why. Okay. And hey, while you're at it, I'll tell you this: it's expensive, but when you're riding through New Mexico. They have no man's land jerky. Have you seen that? No. Look at the pilots and the loves in the jerky section. Okay. The no bag's twenty five bucks. Jesus Christ, but I, dude. But that's probably why I don't know about but it. But I gotta tell crazy. you, it's worth the twenty five bucks. Okay. The bag will last you a while. And it's the best tasting jerky you ever had. I I'll give it a shot. On jerky. I'm on the road, man. I'll give it a shot. I like being on the road and eating jerky and eating junk food. It's terrible for I, me. I do love jerky. You know what? I, know what? I, I've been a fan of. Have you ever heard of uh, those little uh, snack sticks, Dukes? There are uh, there are a lot of these gas stations now, uh -huh. man. They're uh, they're like little fucking snack sticks, dude. Uh, Dukes, man. They're so good though. The the green chili pepper is oh my god, it's nice. like fucking crack. Bro. I'll be looking for that now. Yeah, check it out, man. It's pretty cool. My wallet probably doesn't thank you. No, it's no, it's not that expensive. <laughs> I think it's like seven or nine bucks, but it's a lot of fucking snack sticks in there, and the quality is awesome. Are they wrapped in like a little red? No, it's like a um, big plastic bag. You know. Oh shit. It's like probably like I don't know half a pound of them or something. A lot of like, a lot of snack sticks for you for your money, man. Nice. Yeah, that's also why I don't do jerky as much. I fucking love jerky, but the prices of good jerky is it's fucking expensive. Twenty five bucks for a bag. Yeah, that's a lot of money, man. When we went to jerky. Mexico this last time, yeah. Of course, on the way I grabbed one. Yeah. And Barbie's like, I gotta have another one. It's addictive. <laughs> this no man's land is 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 addictive. Okay. I I, I spend countless dollars on beef jerky. I don't know why. It's so good. Yeah. But when I'm on the road, it's just like... No, it's the best road snack. Yeah. Yeah. And Chex Mix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't go nuts for Chex Mix. I don't, man. I'm a... I'm a uh, I like meat and fucking chocolate. That's what I go crazy for, man. Yeah. I'm such a fucking sugar junkie on the road. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why when you get somewhere, you're like, ugh. Yeah. I feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been yeah. eating jerky and fucking chocolate and different shit and junk food and out to eat. Yeah. It's, you're stuck. You can't. You you're know, eating like crap on the road. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You want to stop and eat something from a grocery store because it's cheaper, but you know, it's like <sighs> fast and tasty, man. Yeah. It's hard to beat. You yeah. Know? That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. After, after I'm into like about a half a week to a week into a road trip, I'm like, oh boy, I'm starting to feel it. 
Yeah. So I'm feeling it, man. But I don't really eat like that at home so much, so I just say fuck it, man. Like I just I can't control myself with the tasty foods out there. Oh my god. It's so fucking good. I was just telling someone, uh, actually Dumb Rush, I was just telling him, man, I'm fucking hitting up Carl's Jr. while I'm out here. We don't have him back east. Fuck, dude, I'm such a sucker for some of those places when I'm out west. Carl's Jr. is one of them, though. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, she likes Carl's Jr. too. <laughs> There's one around the corner she always goes to. Yeah. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Even though it's terrible for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, dude. Um... Yeah, I don't know, man. You want to cover anything else? Anything else you want to tell the people about? This is Nomad's Engine. I did a podcast with him yesterday. That's cool. Love there it is, guy. Charlie. He's good to me. It's coming together, dude. That's a solid friend, man. It's badass. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. He's, he's the fucking best. He's good people. He's yeah. good people. Um, You know, we appreciate the support. Everybody that's come through, we just appreciate it. And the fact that you guys just let me build, like you let me just take control, kind of. You give me an idea of what you want, and I run with it. And I've been able to create some pretty cool three-dimensional functioning art. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Just creating art. That is a cool and, way to look at it. You know, I, I look at the stuff, I look at the drivetrain, and I try to build you a nice, clean-looking drivetrain. So when you build your bike around it, you're like, damn, that shit's, that shit's on point. Dude, it's the heart of every fucking motorcycle. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and people, take, people take it for granted. I got to tell you, through the years, it's almost like it's to be expected. Mm -hmm. It's got an engine. It should run. Right. This is oh. choppers. This is, this is 50, some of this is 50 and 60 and 70-year-old equipment. Yeah. Things happen. And... I like people who like to learn their stuff and keep their bikes going and, and realize that, that it's not like going down to Harley Davidson and buying yourself a brand new M8. Right. And it, it takes work. Right. If you're going to chopper and you're going to drag race and you're going to do old V twin stuff. Yeah. You best be ready to be able to turn those wrenches and, and yeah. keep it moving and, or just go buy a push button bike and stay out of it. You know, uh, I laugh, but we were just talking outside about me getting an M8. Yep. You know, I've got the drag bike inside. But I actually want one that I can ride across country because I do this every day for a living. Yep. I don't mind working on my stuff. Yep. But I don't know if I could trust my FXR to go all the way across the country, you know, when right. I had Well, it. I mean, it's essentially a drag bike with limited street capability. Well, I, I wouldn't want to take it coast to coast, you know. No, my other FXR. Oh. Or even oh. just an old soft yep. tail. Yep. It could be done. Yep. It's just... The parts aren't as convenient to get. You can't just go over to Harley and get a part. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that's kind of want to stay up to date on a bike. And I don't have to work on it so much. Right. You know, I can get on my bike after a day a day of working on this stuff and go for a ride. Yeah. I want a little selection of everything. You know, yeah. Old and new. And Let me ask you this. I, I wanted to ask you before, but let's do it now, man. Um, this, this FXR M8 that you're building now is fuel injected. Um, originally, you were going to carburate it. I got your carburetor set up. You did. That's going to go on my M8 FXR. This everyday M8 FXR you want to build, are you going to go carbureted on that one or are you going to fuel inject again? Um. Or like not even decided yet? I don't know. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to go with that yet. Okay. It. I like the fact that if I do get a bike, a newer M8, I'd like to be able to just let it auto tune wherever it goes, and that way I'm not forced to deal with the carburetor all the time. Yeah. So I can cross country. Say well, I that's want to the go to purpose Kansas of or, this one too. It's yeah. going to be just like a push button everyday bike. Yep. But rad as hell. I probably won't put it, like no cam. Right. No big bore kit. I'll just get it and leave it stock. Maybe a pipe and an air cleaner. Okay. The stock, the stocker it is, the longer it lasts. For sure. The more you start hot rodding stuff, obviously For it sure. takes a toll on things. Yep. Just like earlier when you were talking about, you know, the Evo. What's a, you know, what's a good Evo? What's a good ratio? The bigger it is, the more power it is, the more it's going to beat everything else to death, and that's yep. just how it goes. So, yep. my truck. I think of it in theory as my truck. <laughs> I have done nothing to my truck except leave it stock and change the oil. Yep. Take care of it and drive it around the country and put a lot of miles on it. Yep. Same thing with my motorcycle. I've seen some of these twin cams. Yep. Only have clutches in a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. And tensioners. 
Yep. Something to be said for that. If you don't start putting cams and pistons and like, for sure, just leave it stock, it'll go forever. And that's kind of what I'm looking for as well. Okay. I just want a good road bike I can go. Like, hey, I want to come out to Which your place. Which a factory 107 or a 114 still fucking gets you going, dude. Yeah. I mean, they're fun as hell. You know who sold me on it the most? But besides Danny <laughs> at, the, at the collective, my dad. Oh, okay. My dad. What do you buy? A, a brand new one? He's got a. He's got a. Uh, I don't even know what the hell it is. FL. FLHR. One of the baggers, though? Yeah. Okay. Man, he loves that bike. Yeah. And he loved his Goldwing before that. Yeah. And then he got this, and he's like, oh, I really like this. Yep. So he swears by it. Man, this thing's got all this torque. And I'm like, I ride drag bikes, dude. Nothing is, nothing's going to impress me. But yeah, I actually got to ride one, and I was like, damn, this thing's pretty nice. And yeah. It does handle pretty well. And I've seen yours. It's such yeah. a well-balanced street thing. Like, that that engine, man, they, they nailed it for a factory engine and all that. Yep. Um. Yeah, like even mine, man. I'm not, I'm not camming it or nothing. I did the pipe in the air filter, tuned it, and that's it, man. I want to go a hundred thousand miles on it. And that's it, man. You know. Yep. Um, it's funny too. You say that, like they, are, yeah, that's a one fourteen, and and it's it makes all the power it will for a pipe and a, an air cleaner and a tune, and it and it rips. It does, but um, it's been in Colorado all winter, and I've been riding my one eleven FXR um with a belt drive and a six speed on it and you know that bike will wheelie clean right through first and second gear and i I love it dude i'll go to the grave with that bike it's the only thing in my life that is never for sale but i i thought this m8 was was a bit faster I, i didn't go so long without riding it and i just been on this fxr for the last fucking almost year now you know and uh Dude, I got back on this thing, and I'm like, this thing is a slug, dude. It is, it is a slug compared to that 111, you know. But it's, it's still a fast bike, you know, a, for a stock engine. Yeah. You know, those M8s are still fucking fast. The gearing, you know, later gearing, later transmission gearing, all the sprockets for later years. Yeah. You know, through the years, they'd make gearing per, you know, mile per hour. If you had an interstate that was like 55 or 60, right. that's what they kind of gear you at. Right. So now we're doing 80 and 75, 80 on some of these freeways. They want you to be able to make it. Yeah. And Dude, I did like 110 the whole way here. I'm not geez. joking. Like, And it just... Up it to just, 8 there and over the through Gila Bend? The whole fucking way. Yeah, I right always, through Gila Bend. I always yeah, do yeah, like yeah. 80, 90 through yeah. there with the radar detector Dude, on. the cars are doing fucking 80 to 90 yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So I kind of wanted to get something a little bit newer that I know I can... It's not that I, you know... I. I can't trust my motorcycles to go places. I've been all over on my bikes. Yeah. But I want to do the newer stuff is awesome. You know, dude, I was telling someone in EDR, people are fucking, you know, like you go to camp outs now, people are just revving engines off the limiters. Dude, you know what did that? Twin cams. They're tough enough to take it. You you couldn't do that in the shovel head and and early Evo days. Those engines wouldn't take it. (laughs) Like as awesome as they are. I have fucking, I mean, six running Evo bikes right now. I love them, but <laughs> you're not, dude. What made campouts turn into that shit is twin cams with rev limiters and M8s with rev limiters. That they could take me. that shit. That shit kills me. I fucking hate it. I hate it. You look like a fucking idiot. Oh, dude, there's nobody thinks you're cool doing that. No, nope, not at all. Matter and of fact, everyone around you hates you. So what I like to do is when, we're, when they're done doing it, I walk over and hand them my business card. When you're ready, you're going to fucking have to call me, pal. Yes, oh, dude, we'll that's yeah, awesome. a deal. That's awesome, dude. Fuck, yeah. dude, that shit blows but my mind. But that's what let fucking morons do that. No chick has ever said, oh my God, listen to that two-step limiter. No. At a, at a that's bike never event. made a pussy wet. No. <laughs> Maybe it's a track because they, you know, yeah, we'll go there later. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> we'll like, go there oh later. my God, dude, <laughs> drives me nuts. But oh. that's, that is, that is what let people do that shit is these later model engines are tough as nails, man. They really are. Like I had a Dyna, like I always like to keep one new bike amongst all of these older bikes that I run. It's. It just as an everyday push it's a button smart bike, option. and let's face it, man, a lot of these older bikes they're broken down, and I don't have time to fix them immediately all the time. Sometimes right. I do, but a lot of times I don't. And I'm looking at all these road trips I do, and I'm like, dude, like to make this podcast happen, especially, it's like, you know, whether I like it or not, man, you know, I'm leaving on certain dates for certain trips, and I need a fucking bike. Sometimes I need that late model bike to just push it and go. Yep. 
I my totally, totally I had agree. a I had a Dyna before this, a twin cam Dyna, that I didn't do a fucking thing. I did a lot. I set it up crazy with like inverted front end, piggyback. I went I just went crazy immediately with that bike. And then I rode the balls out of it. Same thing though, kept the engine. I never opened it up internally. Smart. Pipe and an air filter and a tune. The rest of it was wild with like an inverted front end, piggyback shocks, pro taper bars, like the whole the whole fucking Dyna kitted out, you know? Um, Did you have the long socks too? No, no, I don't do that. Oh. I keep it. Good deal. I keep it cool. Good deal. <laughs> I don't. I don't fully oh, Dyna bro out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and I don't. You know, I don't do the Dyna bro rev limiter thing. But I, I beat the the nails off of that bike. And I, dude, I didn't do anything except tires, brake pads, and oil changes for fucking forty thousand miles. Damn. I raffled that bike off, and the kid that has that bike is still beating the nails out of it in Boston. And it's still just going. This M8, I plan on doing the same thing. I already got thirty grand on the clock on that thing. I want to do a hundred grand plus on that thing and not touch it. You could do that with these newer bikes. I say it's like it's like driving a fucking Honda Civic. These new bikes. Yeah. You just fucking push the button and go, dude. I didn't even I never even did a fucking gasket on that Dyna. I never did anything. It never leaked. It never did nothing. And I hope this M8's the same way, man. I hope I don't do a fucking thing to it. The only problem I had with that bike was uh, Harley warranted a front set of rotors that warped on me. That was it, man. Like I just, I just wanted to keep going, you know. Well, if you ever go to, but it's nice to have a bike like that and you're stable. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're not getting the cool points yet that you are on a fucking a big inch FXR or a shovel okay. head or something. But who gives a fuck? At least I get I'm going to the event. At least I'm getting there, you know. <laughs> but I mean, getting back to that, it's just proof that like. These, there is something to be said for these newer bikes, man. They fucking last. And like you said, you're setting up an FXR that you want to just not even think about, push the button and go, which is as cool as fuck an M8 FXR, dude. That's all the cool points you're going to get anyway. You know, it's like, that's. I mean, it ain't going to get much better than that, you know? Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. My teacher told me, anything you think you can do with motorcycles, yeah. it's probably already been done. Especially nowadays. Right. Yeah. And we were sitting in there, and we're smoking, smoking a blunt. I told Barbie, we're watching Ancient Aliens, and I said, just out of the blue, I was like, you know, I've never seen anybody stuff an M8 drivetrain in a Kenny Boyce Pro Street chassis. Let's let's be different. Yeah, let's do it. $24,000 later, we're real different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man, but it's been fun. We've got a lot of people that have been involved with it. And I think this I think this bike, even if it doesn't make it big and people, you know, whatever, there's a lot of these swaps out there that have had a lot of publicity over them. And they're really nice bikes, well put together by yeah. Craftsman. I haven't seen a garbage M8 yet. No. Like a, like, like a shoddy one, you know? I've seen a couple They've of all choppers. been pretty good. I seen one as a chopper. I think I yeah. showed you that one from Herbin Fab. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. thing is so nice, and it's carbureted. Yep, yep. You know, Alley Art. They did a carbureted one, a yep. race bike. Uh, the rest I've seen are all fuel injected. There's and, two guys in England I've been talking to that did M8 FXRs. Um, like generally look like factory bikes, like that hard drive dude that did his main drive cycle. Ma main drive, not that hard drive. Really nice. Super clean. Looks like the factory built that. Yeah. Thing. Um, these guys in England did that similar, just looks like factory FXRs, but M8s in them, carbureted, um, which is pretty rad. They're getting um, that Microtronics or Micro, uh, that kit that you got for me. That's what they're running. That's um, a cool Al kit. Altman or? Altman no, Microtronics. is it Al Al Yeah, from Germany. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're running. Um, and they're running, uh, uh, one guy's running an E carburetor, and I want to say the other guy's running a G. But yeah, I mean... You're Which running. is amazing because I, for as much air as those things pull, yep. I'm surprised an E works. The Dude, only reason I'm I didn't surprised use that, too, man. The only reason you I didn't use that. You gotta put a G on those. You gotta. Even a D. Yeah. You could you could use a Makuni 51 so and it would still give what, it more. What I really want to do with mine, I'm, I don't want to use that plastic manifold. I just want the ignition. I haven't even told you this yet. But uh, I plan on taking a fuel-injected manifold, cutting it, and uh, machining my own throats for it and doing, I want to do twin t uh, 42 Makunis on there. Nice. That would feed it. Uh, dude, and whether it, I, and I get it, like I've talked to, um, like I was talking to you, I've talked to Danny Wilson and the FXR division guys. Like I know those bikes, they really optimally need fuel injection. 
Like I don't, I think anyone out there that thinks they're getting the most out of those engines with carburetors is lying to themselves. Oh, absolutely. I know I'm not going to get the most out of it. I just want to, I just want to drop a big dick on the table. So and I want to, I want a twin carb and M8. I think it would be rad as hell, man. To make mine work with that kit. Yeah. First of all, the RPM wasn't high enough for what we're looking for. Well, you're going full tilt performance. Right. Like I'm building a chopper. Right. So you're you know? not going to be like beating the deck I'm just, like I'm we just are. going cool guy points, right. dude. So you know? that leaves you in the range of where that RPM limiter is on that kit. That was a really nice kit. And What's just, the limiter on there? Like seven thousand? Like, no, it was like six sixty or sixty two hundred. Okay. So this one's like 7,500. I'm going to okay. spin the hell out of these wheels. Okay. And what is like a, like my bike out there? What would that thing spin to? Like, um, I usually shift around 55, six grand, but like, will these M8s like spin to the moon? I don't know. We're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Uh, okay. I, I think you could probably get it up at about 6,500, seven grand. Safely. Um, for, for quality parts. Like you have all aftermarket internals and. Yeah, I think it would do it. Yeah. I think it would do yep. it. Cool yeah, man. I'm gonna find I can't out. wait. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what Danny's pushed these things to. Yeah. Uh, I've watched him dyno a bunch of them. He does a really good job. Uh, obviously, you know, streetable stuff. You're not gonna just get in there, and spin it all the way out. Right. We're gonna find out on the dyno here pretty soon. Right. And that kit wouldn't work for us. But at that point, when we were gonna do it, to to effectively give this thing enough air, I was thinking to do the same thing you're talking about, only with two super D's. Oh, you wanted to do the twin also? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And twin Super Ds. Yep. That's crazy, man. To give this thing enough air. Okay. And if it was, you know, obviously it's all hot rod stuff. So right. it's going to need that. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Personally, uh, like for what you're doing, that would probably be awesome. But like for me, I actually think even twin 42s. Perfect. Would it probably be perfect? I almost think that I'd have to make the engine a bit hot rod to want to work with that much. You know, that's a lot of fucking air, dude. You know, um, I think most bikes when guys do all that cool guy shit, they're way over carbureted. You know, I've seen you got to you got to run a lot of horsepower to really want eighty four millimeters of fucking of fucking throat. You yeah, know, you really only give a it, lot of carburetion. Are you going to do them individual per head? Or I just don't know yet. Make I was, it all bunch into one because I, I was going to cut a stock manifold. I was thinking into one, which I think is the more efficient way to do it. Right? One, I, I got to be honest. I never talked to anyone who knows what they're talking about with twin carbs. Um, I mean, you'll be the first. We'll nerd out after this podcast, and there'll be many phone calls. But um, I don't know, man. I never really got into the twin carb bikes besides looking at them and thinking they're cool. Um, I briefly spoke to a guy in Kentucky. Do you know Dozer? I don't. He builds like really like born free one offy kind of um, real hand built mm-hmm. choppers. Um, I do recall him? But he yeah. just um, he was just in New York and and I was talking to him. I'm gonna see him in Tennessee in a couple weeks. Um, he just did a twin carbed pan head. He loves twin carb stuff. I talked to him a little bit about it, but he's not building horsepower bikes. He's just building like cool pans and shovels and flatheads just to run properly on the street. And I know right. he makes them really run good on the street. And they're also kicker bikes. So I know, like, they need to be dialed. You know what I mean? Um, and I know he runs these bikes. So I don't know, man. I got to talk to some big twin carbureted horsepower guys, really. But um, I, I don't know, man. I'm totally blind. But I could tell you this. For better or worse, whether it runs good, whether it makes a lot of power, it has to run good. It has to be reliable. Outside of that, I'm putting a fucking twin carb set up on an M8. Also because no one's done it. Yep. Uh, maybe someone will beat me to it now that I'm putting it in the cosmos here. And I don't really care because I don't really care. Um, you know, with a lot of this stuff I've said, uh, which is why we haven't seen real garbage uh, M8 FXRs, is because it takes a lot of skill to do them. You're not going to see guys twin cams. You're not going to see guys throwing M8s and FXRs like you do with twin cams. No. Nope. It's going to separate the men from the boys. You know what I mean? Th- these M8 FXRs. And then, like, what you and Danny are doing, man, like, real big dick shit, you're just not going to see that, man. You, that's really, that's a whole nother level, you know? Like, I just, I want to build a cool FXR chopper with an M8, you know? So I'm doing what I'm doing, but... 
you guys are on a whole nother level. I think you yours know? would be pretty nice. <laughs> it's going to be cool, I, for sure. The twin carb you thing, it, I'm a sucker It's going to be it. rad, dude. Remember, remember the know? diggers when they had the Delordo with the twin throats on them? Sick, yeah. Yes. I always yes. liked that. I always thought it was cool when it yep. came out the side of the Rivera intake, you know? Yeah. I always thought that was pretty rad. Very cool. I think uh, I think if you do it, <laughs> do it, do it like do it like early motorcycles where the carburetor is really supposed to be on the left side. Oh. Or on the left side. Oh, damn. Make it odd. Where people are like, what the hell is this? Yeah, I'm going to need the help of like uh, guys like you. Uh, that's that's probably out of my uh, capabilities. Uh, or do it like the older you know? Vera with the Delordos. Just make it where it comes out, swoops to the front, and you got this box that controls both, and you could have somebody fab it down the middle so they're both separate and at the end like they come down is that how those were that's what the dual throat no, they, it was separate all the way i think they were open the whole way okay i never really looked down one okay but you could fab one of these to be closed off on separate chambers going all the way down do you think that would help it run better i don't know okay <laughs> i don't okay. know but it'd be it'd be, it'd be something cool. it'd yeah. be a cool experiment to, to try it out yeah yeah you know? it's all gonna be an experiment you know I think uh, it'd probably work best with individual tubes. Yeah. And each carb hanging off well, of that. Well, here's, like the speed here's my other head. thing. Is like, the other thing too is like, I want this to be super duper reliable. Um, you know, in terms of, when I, the reason I say that, in terms of like, just supporting it all properly too. Like, just like, you're going to have to have like, some sort of heavy duty bracketry, you know, like, so that this shit's not cracking, you know. I don't want carbs falling off or even just shifting and sucking air and like, oh, I got to fuck with this thing every so often. Like, I want it to also be like,